pot over uh, Artie Burns in the left corner in the end zone. Sean Davis was jogging on the way over there. That, that's, yeah. that's inexcusable. And, you know, for for Burns to be in that position is one thing, but for him to ha- supposed to have help over the top and for a guy like Sean Davis not to get over there, that, that's lazy defense. And that definitely almost caught up with them tonight. Sean Davis is another concern, and that's another – that's another player that a lot was expected and he's not living up to it. So um, I, I did like that they were even considering benching uh, Burns because basically they're recognizing, you know, you could be stubborn and saying, oh, no, we're just going to stay with the guys we have. We're going to stay with the scheme we have. But, I mean, after what happened last week with Kansas City where they basically just moved at will – you know they recognized well at least hey we at least we at least need to try something different so i i i like that you know sometimes it's hard to admit your mistakes and uh, but so at least they're at least willing to do something different yeah you know as fans of the game you see decisions made by the coaching staff and it's like are we watching the same game <laughs> you know or you know why is this happening whereas why is that happening but it was definitely nice to see the organization recognize hey we have a problem here let's try to admit it Granted, the the other guy they wanted to start, Cody Sensabaugh, like you said, not that great in pass coverage, and we saw that tonight. But you know, at least they're moving in the direction of, hey, you know, there's let's address this problem, even if there's not much we could do with it. Yeah, yeah. Now on the receiving end, another huge game for Juju. This is, I believe, three, three every game this season he's um, caught. Um, more than 100 yards receiving uh huge just he's he's really he's really stepping up and uh he he's looking great out there yeah so he he has gone over 100 yards every single time uh you know on the year he's got nearly 240 yards yeah that's correct uh, you know, what a guy uh, you know it's a shame he's focused on Fortnite you know being his young kid shout out to Mark Madden oh god <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> oh no, and I I'm right there with you guys. It's it, it's ridiculous what he thinks of Juju, but you know, focusing on the good side and giving Juju the props he deserves, he stepped up whenever Antonio Brown couldn't. And you know, that's not a dig to Antonio Brown. It's more so of hey, Juju, you know, he's playing in the slot. He's a really solid number two. We expect big things out of him, and he's delivered so far. Uh, I, in one of my articles, I highlighted. Tampa Bay was terrible in the slot. Their slot corner gave up 10 receptions for over 100 yards and a touchdown last week. I was expecting the same thing, and Juju did exactly that. He had nine receptions, 116 yards. He didn't score, though, but still, you know, he came up big whenever the team he needed to. Yeah, he's he's really stepping up. Um, I, I The whole thing with Antonio Brown, I think it's just a matter of him being uh, – upset that his numbers aren't as great that he's not having big numbers i, I don't know i don't know what the, what the issue is he did have a touchdown uh today he did have uh, six re- receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown so hopefully that makes him a little bit happy um but i think it's just a matter of you know ben not being totally accurate or them for some reason not being on the same page yet and hopefully um Hopefully it's a, it's more of a, um, a there's there's less drama this week because I'm really uh, the Steelers the Steelers leading the league in drama every week is good for people like us that that have uh, oh, podcasts I, and read articles I, I, I am and stuff. So lucky that we get to cover this team. I mean, just constant stuff to write about. So I I wish I was writing about winning all the time, but you know this isn't necessarily <laughs> a bad thing for us either. You're right. I. I, I hate to say this, but I was thinking toward the end of the game, it's like, you know, I really hope they win. I want them to win. But if they lose, this town would go crazy. Oh, man. Could you believe that if they gave up that second half lead and they let them t- come back and win? <laughs> yeah, especially losing that way with a big lead. Like, oh, this, this people would go crazy. So, yeah, Juju stepping up. But also another person stepping up, Vance McDonald. Four receptions, 112 yards, one touchdown, um, and really set the tone with that that first touchdown where he destroyed that poor guy 
Um, that was the, the the nastiest stiff arm I've ever seen for that 75 oh, yeah. yard touchdown. That that definitely replaces Le'Veon Bell's against Drake or Patrick a, a couple of years oh, yeah, ago. Yeah, against <laughs> against uh, the Bengals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, um, I, I, somebody said what what Vance McDonald did to that guy should be I think is illegal in 45 states or something like that. <laughs> that was just so that was just so vicious. Yeah. That was also also in, in terms of viciousness remember when Antonio Brown on that uh, punt return destroyed the uh the the Browns kicker oh when he like karate the, kid the, like the, yeah, the, the, him. yeah. The, the, the flying kick so um that's... Yeah, yeah. To to your point, Vance McDonald. What an answer to Jesse James's career day last week. Uh, whenever McDonald got traded to the Steelers, he had one of the highest drop rates for tight ends in the league. And you know, we've seen him drop the ball a couple times, and you, you just never really know where you're going to get with McDonald. You know, he's so inconsistent. But on nights like tonight, he definitely stepped up, and he was a really big part of why the Steelers won. He has such huge potential because Jesse James is nice, but he's he's too slow. Yeah, th- yeah, there's only so much you can do with Jesse. He's a really nice red zone target, and I think he is like a capable starting tight end in the league. But you know, McDonald's just brings a whole other dimension to that passing attack, and I-, I guess we all saw why tonight, why the Steelers like him so much. Yeah, yeah, and it uh, another problem with the Steelers so far is that third receiving option. There's no, there's nobody that's consistently been there yet. Um, you know, last year it was either Le'Veon Bell or I guess Martavis or whoever, but the, this year there, you know, Antonio Brown's getting double covered. Juju's doing his thing. He's doing well. But then besides that, there's, you know, I mean, yeah, Jesse James had a big game last week, but you need that third option. And if Vance McDonald can do that, that would be that would be great. Yeah, if he can if he can do that on a consistent basis, that would be great. But I also want to give a shout out to James Washington. James Washington had a couple big catches tonight. They kept some sealer drives going. They ended up in some points. So uh, he hasn't gotten a whole lot of playing time this year. But hopefully they start to really work him in. I, I do think he's capable of being that third option. I think that's the plan, or at least that's what we thought would be the plan, is that, that Washington would be that third option. And I think he just needs to... I mean, he's a rookie. We kind of saw this with Juju last year that he kind of had to be brought in slowly. So, you know, he's he's doing a little more every week. And, yeah, I would love to see Washington be that third option because I, I love him. I think he could be, you know, I've heard him re, um, compared to Heinz Ward or Anquan Bolden, you know, just somebody that, you know, you just throw the ball near him and you know he'll he'll fight for the ball. So... Uh, that would be great. That would be great if uh, if he could uh, fill in for that for that third option. Um, Ryan Switzer had three catches for nine yards. It, it's just oh, and a touchdown. It, it's kind of it's just curious that the guy that just that showed up at like the end, you know, they, they just picked up at like the very end of training of uh, of the preseason. He he fills a pretty big role in the offense. Yeah, and you know he's been remarkable in special teams as well. I'm, I'm really happy he's able to uh, be reliable in the return game. Not that Antonio Brown wasn't, but you definitely want to minimize that risk factor putting a guy like Antonio Brown out there. And to your point too, they acquired him at the end of the preseason. He kind of just he walked right in as the team was getting on the plane to go to Cleveland, you know. And, you know, Fickner, he, he definitely likes to toy around with them. We've seen a couple of times where Switzer's been lined up, you know, right next to Ben in the shotgun formation. You know, sometimes they'll give him the ball. Sometimes they'll have him run out. But, yeah, you know, he's, he's just a little gadget guy. He's been phenomenal so far. I love what he does in the return game, I think. I mean, he was basically brought in to be a return specialist. And he has done – he looks like – somebody that's uh that's that's for for once a legit return option back there Steelers fans deserve this after having to watch guys like Rich Gerald Toussaint and Jacoby Jones and Felix Jones having to go through all that and then finally having a legitimate guy like Ryan Switzer it's nice no Steelers fans deserve this one for sure yeah yeah 
I just saw a report that said um, Mike Hilton hyperextended elbow. So I think that's good news. Yeah, it's definitely better than a tear. He he might miss a week if that. It just depends on how well he's able to rehab. But boy, I, I think that'd be a really big loss against Baltimore next week on Sunday night. Yeah, short week, Baltimore Sunday night, um, division game, super huge. Um, yeah, but isn't it funny that? As sports fans, we almost become medical experts in some things. Like, I could tell you every part of the knee, uh, you know, the MCL, ACL, the meniscus, you know, it's it, it, it's funny how certain medical terms, it's like it's like almost like we have to be doctors. Oh, yeah, you know, we just get so used to it. You know, we consume so much of sports, it's almost like we see a guy go down and we can, we can almost call it from the jump. You know, with, with Jimmy G, whenever he tore his ACL, it was a non-contact injury, so we kind of assumed the worst. And, you know, we didn't have to go to middle school for that. You know, we didn't have to stay in school for seven years and get a doctorate <laughs> and all that good stuff. So that, that is funny for sure. I think I think some of us are a little better at it than others for sure. But So um, my daughter had to have ACL surgery um, earlier this year, and I was able to step in and, like, they had all kinds of questions. I'm like, um, yeah, actually, I know about the uh, ACL, and I, I know about this <laughs> Like, 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 it's, it's like I'll that step in. I got this guy. Right, right, right. It's like, it's like, are you a doctor? No, but I stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> Another oh, thing man. we've had to know because of basically because of Le'Veon Bell is we have to have to be experts at the CBA and the franchise tag and all that. Oh, yeah, we, we can tell you how the franchise tag works, how many times a player can get franchise tagged, how much money he's missing per game, you know, how how right. stupid his agent is, all that fun stuff. So, you know, it, it's definitely interesting and hilarious that you bring that up because so many of us, you know, we're so passionate about it and we just dive deep into this kind of stuff. And, you know, I'm sure nobody asked for our opinions, but we'll be more than happy to give it anyway, you know? <laughs> um. I was on a podcast that was it was a general like fantasy football podcast and they were asking me about Le'Veon Bell and I was just rattling off all these you know what his situation is and how he how he needs this like why are they why do they need to be um, week ten and I explained why it's like why it's like wow you you're really you're really knowledgeable about this it's like yeah as a Steeler fan you have to be yeah you know if, if you're gonna sit there and you know call Le'Veon Bell lazy and say we don't deserve him you at least got to know the stuff about his, the CBA don't you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think he's actually going to get traded? I, I highly doubt it, but it would be amazing if they could get something for him. I think the Steelers are in a position to where they don't need to get rid of him right away, and I think they'll sit on him until the right offer comes around. They have until week eight to ditch him, which another fun fact, you know, for you since we have to know everything. They have until week eight to get rid of him. So I think until a, a team comes with a, like a legitimate offer, because let's be real, I think teams might be trying to lowball the Steelers right now. You know, I think teams kind of might see them as desperate to kind of get rid of him and get the monkey off of their back. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was traded, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they went ahead and kept him. Well, if they do nothing they and they lose him next year, they get a third, like a like the compensatory third round pick like at the end of the third round. Yeah. So, you know, any offer that they would get would have to be at least, you know, a third rounder where they would move up, you know, sooner in the third round or, you know, possibly a, a second or, or another player or something like that. So, uh, yeah. And, and but, but, you know, the, the crazy thing is, you know, everybody was going crazy about AB last week. But to me, seeing, seeing him fat on a jet ski basically means that he doesn't care about this year. And I, I thought he would be able to come in like on week 10 or week eight or whatever and, you know, be fresh and stuff, but it looks like he doesn't even care and he's fat and out of shape. So it's like, basically we just lost him for the whole year. Yeah. It almost looks like he's been planning for next year all along. You know, he's, he's in clubs singing. He's, you know, he's on jet skis, you know, riding nice and, you know, I, I think from the start and even the comments from his agent, 
you know, his agent basically told him, hey, these guys are going to run you into the ground. And, you know, to his point, he's absolutely right. I do think the Steelers are going to give him another 400 touches this year. But, you know, if you have a player like Le'Veon Bell, why would you not use him that much? But back to your point, he just, he, I think that's a problem. I think that's what made his teammates so mad is that, hey, 